Aviation pioneer Igor Sikorsky's decades-long dream of building a helicopter finally paid off in 1938, when he convinced the United Aircraft Executives to let him develop a machine that would revolutionize the aviation industry. Then, as Sikorsky's newest creation lifted off the ground vertically, and with him inside it, the VS-300 became America's first practical and amphibious helicopter. The experimental machine was also the first helicopter to use a single vertical plane tail rotor configuration for anti-torque successfully. But it was when the helicopter broke a long-held record by the Germans that the world really paid attention, setting the stage for the development of larger and better helicopters born out of the passion and perseverance of one man. The Need for Helicopters Igor Sikorsky built his first helicopter in 1909. However, it never managed to lift off the ground. A subsequent model built a year later did rise a short distance, but could never lift with a pilot inside. Following these frustrating experiments, Sikorsky turned his attention to fixed-wing aircraft without ever forgetting his passion for helicopters. According to the Sikorsky archives, the aviation designer said, quote, If a man is in need of rescue, an airplane can come in and throw flowers on him, and that's just about all but a direct lift aircraft could come in and save his life. Despite several successful projects, including a Tsarist government aircraft when World War I and the Russian Revolution broke out, Sikorsky decided he was on the wrong side of the class struggle and fled to France in 1918. After failing to find a steady income, Sikorsky took inspiration from the work of Edison and Ford and moved to the United States the following year. In 1923, the 34-year-old Sikorsky and other associates founded the Sikorsky Aero Engineering Corporation on Long Island, New York. For close to a decade, the engineer spent most of his time working on amphibious aircraft, establishing the Sikorsky brand across the United States. Still, he continued to tinker with helicopter concept designs during his spare time. The pioneer moved the Sikorsky Aviation Corporation to Stratford, Connecticut in 1929, after the company was acquired by the United Aircraft Holding Company. For years, the now engineering manager tried out his helicopter patents on flying model planes built by his son and presented them to the engineers and board of directors of United Aircraft. Then, in late 1938, Sikorsky approached the top management and recommended that the design and development of a direct lift machine should begin as soon as possible. However, United Aircraft was significantly suffering from the effects of the Depression and was close to shutting down production at the Sikorsky division. Still, with several trials of early helicopter experiments and nearly three decades of research behind them, United finally approved the project, albeit with a low budget. Thus, Sikorsky retained a small team to develop and work on America's first viable helicopter. VS-300 Following decades of study and research, Igor Sikorsky and his company were finally out of the fixed-wing business and into the helicopter business. Although his initial calculations estimated that the aircraft would cost no more than $30,000 to build, it ended up costing much more. Still, United Aircraft and the aviation industry in general ultimately considered it a bargain due to the results that changed the aviation industry forever. In April of 1939, Sikorsky Aircraft merged with Chance Vought, beginning a joint venture to develop helicopters. The first model, the Vought Sikorsky BS-300, was built during the latter part of the year and was different from any other helicopter ever seen in Europe. The aircraft had an open fuselage, complete with steel tubes forward and a boom aft carrying a ventral fin and the tail rotor. The pilot sat under the four-cylinder, 75-horsepower Lycoming engine on the forward structure. In addition, the motor had cyclic pitch control for the primary 28-foot diameter three-blade main rotor, while a single anti-torque tail rotor was located in a narrow enclosed tail boom, supporting a large underfin. The experimental machine was first flown by Sikorsky himself on September 14, 1939. The helicopter was tethered with cables and had weights suspended underneath for further stability. This first flight was the beginning of a four-year test program set to prove the efficiency of Sikorsky's single-rotor aircraft. With the Sikorsky VS-300, the engineer became the father of the global helicopter industry, changing the course of civilian and military aviation forever. A first. In developing the rotary wing flight concept, Sikorsky became the first engineer to introduce a single engine to power the main and tail rotor system. The only previous attempt at a single-lift rotor helicopter was the Soviet Union's Yuryev Cherimukhin TSAGI-1EA, built in 1931 using a pair of upgraded Nom Monosupop rotary engines. 
Still, the cyclic control did not meet Sikorsky's standards, and the VS-300 was grounded for modifications. The new and revised version of the VS-300 used its main rotor for lift only. Sikorsky switched the motor to a 90-horsepower Franklin model and locked the cyclic by adding two smaller vertical-axis anti-torque lifting rotors to both sides after the tail boom. In addition, the engineers attached outriggers slightly forward on the open fuselage structure, through which two small, horizontally-mounted rotors provided longitudinal and lateral control. By early 1940, the model was ready for testing. America's First Helicopter Flying resumed in the early spring of 1940, and on May 13th, the VS-300 performed the first untethered free flight, becoming the most successful helicopter outside of Germany. During the testing period, the aircraft demonstrated an exceptional ability to lift up from the ground, climb vertically or obliquely, and hover over one spot for minutes. The tests were performed under different weather conditions, ranging from calm clouds to fresh, gusty winds of up to 25 miles per hour. The VS-300 helicopter was also flown forward, backward, and sideways, performing takeoff and landing maneuvers from small spaces in between buildings. This included a tiny parking lot situated between a fence and a garden. The aircraft's exceptional performance proved to United Aircraft not only the possibility, but the practicability of operating such an aircraft from small spaces. By mid-1940, the VS-300 was staying airborne without any tether cables for up to 15 minutes. Then, on September 6th and October 14th, the aircraft was flown over a field at 30 to 45 miles per hour speeds during 15-minute flights, making turns in both directions and raking a figure eight several times while in flight. From 1940 to 1941, the VS-300 underwent even more modifications, the most important being a tail outrigger replacement, switched with a small vertical pylon with a single horizontal tail rotor. Other alterations included the arrangement of the main undercarriage and fitting nose, and putting tail wheels in place of skids. In April of 1941, the engineers installed two large pneumatic rubber flotation bags on the VS-300's undercarriage wheels to trial ascent from water. While the VS-300 was not the first waterborne helicopter, the modification allowed it to become the first helicopter to perform a successful takeoff from water. On May 6th, Igor Sikorsky flew the aircraft to a new world endurance record by staying aloft for one hour, 32 minutes, eclipsing the Germans' FW-61's history and proving America's capability to build a helicopter just as formidable. After almost 20 major modifications, the VS-300 was finally shown to the United States Army and Navy. According to Army Captain Franklin Gregory, an experienced autogyro pilot, the VS-300 was quite hard to control, calling the aircraft a bucking bronco and difficult. Still, the captain believed it was possible to master by trying new piloting techniques and intensive development, as well as thoroughly studying the helicopter's control systems. A New Era After further changes that included switching to another engine and the use of fabric to cover part of the airframe, the VS-300 helicopter continued to fly well into 1942. According to several experts, while the helicopter was built only as an experimental model, the project opened many doors in the aviation industry, and the VS-300 is widely considered the first successful single main rotor helicopter in the world. The first practical aircraft capable of accomplishing helicopter-style vertical takeoff, landing, hovering, forward-backward, and sideways flight were the Brigot Durand and the FW-61. However, the VS-300 accomplished more, as Sikorsky paved the way for production aircraft to carry a useful load and perform productive jobs or missions. While Sikorsky did not technically pioneer any technology or method with the VS-300, the Russian-born engineer assembled the world's best-known techniques to produce his first practical helicopter. Today, these techniques are used all over the world, and Sikorsky's perseverance paid off. After several successful VS-300 tests, he was given approval for his first production helicopter, the R-4, which became the world's first large-scale mass-produced helicopter, and the first one to be used by the U.S. Army Air Forces, the Navy, Coast Guard, the Royal Air Force, and the Royal Navy. Ultimately, the VS-300 flew 102 hours, 32 minutes, and 26 seconds of flight, and the project was retired in 1943 to the Henry Ford Museum in Minnesota, where it remains today. Summing up Sikorsky's contribution 20 years later, Lee Johnson, then general manager of Sikorsky Aircraft, stated, quote, before Igor Sikorsky flew the VS-300, there was no helicopter industry. After he flew it, there was. Thank you for watching our Dark Skies video. What do you think of America's first helicopter? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. 
and don't forget to subscribe to our Dark Documentaries channels for more exciting history-inspired stories. Also hit the bell icon to be notified of all our newest content.